The tension was thick enough to cut with a knife as I forced a plastic smile. Derek sat at the head of the dining table, holding court like some pompous king while his sycophantic friends fawned over him. Marla, darling, be a dear and grab the Cabernet from the cellar, would you? Derek's voice was sickly sweet, but his eyes glinted with a subtle warning. I rose obediently, my knuckles whitening as I gripped the tablecloth. In the kitchen, I exhaled slowly, trying to regain my composure. Get it together, Marla. Just another night of playing the perfect hostess. When I returned with the deep burgundy bottle, Derek was recounting his latest corporate conquest, his arm draped territorially over the back of Cassidy's chair. The sleek blonde from marketing leaned in, enraptured, hanging on his every word. My hands shook slightly as I poured the wine. Thanks, honey, Derek said dismissively as the liquid splashed over the rim. No need to make a scene. Bile rose in my throat. I wanted to shatter that stupid bottle over his smug head to wipe that arrogant smirk off his face. But the perfect facade couldn't crack, not in front of his adoring fans. The hours crawled by in a blur of strained laughter, meaningless small talk, and Derek's not-so-subtle flirtations with Cassidy across the table. Their inside jokes and lingering glances twisted the knife deeper into my gut. Finally, blessedly, the evening drew to a close. As the last guest trickled out the door, Derek rounded on me. "'What the hell was that about, spilling the wine?' he growled, his rage palpable even at a whisper. "'Embarrassing me in front of my colleagues like some dits?' "'Derek, I—' My words caught as his finger jabbed towards my face. "'Don't make excuses. Get it together, Marla. We have an image to maintain.' With that, he stalked off, leaving me alone in the dining room amid the detritus of shattered illusions. I sank into a chair— my entire body numb. Eighteen years. I'd wasted eighteen years of my life crafting this hollowed-out sham of a marriage, all for his status and success. For the first time I allowed myself to wonder, was it all a lie? My eyes drifted to the burgundy stains on the Belgian linen tablecloth, and reality came crashing down. That was my life now, spilled out in those concentric rings. A lifetime's worth of lies and humiliation, seeping through the cracks of Derek's meticulously constructed facade. And in that moment, something deep inside me twisted and hardened with resolve. I was done playing the obedient trophy wife. Derek wanted to shatter our perfect image? Fine, I'd burn the whole damn thing to the ground. My hands trembled as I clutched the damning evidence. Photos of Derek and Cassidy locked in an intimate embrace outside a hotel. Her cherry-red talons raked through his silver hair as he crushed her body against his. I felt sick. Marla? Vincent's concerned voice crackled through the phone's tiny speaker. You there? He's having an affair, I whispered hoarsely, with that insipid blonde from marketing. There was a pause as my brother processed the bombshell. I'm so sorry, sis, but are you sure? See for yourself. I angled the phone's camera toward the incriminating images strewn across my desk. Vincent's sharp intake of breath was the only sound for several beats. Then, that rat bastard. I'll kill him. No, Vince, I said firmly, surprising myself with the steely edge in my tone. He's not worth going to jail over. So what, you're just going to take this lying down? Vincent sputtered incredulously, after everything he's put you through? Jaw clenched. I spoke in clipped sentences. I'm not the one lying down, Vincent. Not anymore. What are you going to do? I haven't decided yet. But I need you to promise me something. I paused, steadying my breath. If anything happens, if I go scorched earth, I need you on my side. You know I've always got your back, Marla. The fierceness in his voice was utterly sincere. Whatever you need, I'm in. With that vow cementing my resolve, I plotted my next move. A week crawled by as I stewed in my own silent fury, desperate for the right moment to strike. Every smug smirk and dismissive comment from Derek only stoked the fire in my chest. Friday night, he returned home late as usual, shirt rumpled and hair must, no doubt, from another tryst. Hey, babe, he said with mock brightness, breezing through the foyer. I emerged from the living room, photographs in hand. You son of a bitch. Derek stopped dead, his expression falling as his gaze fell on the evidence spread before him. After an endless pause, his lip curled in an ugly sneer. Those pictures are out of context. Cut the crap, I hurled the stack of glossies at his face, my rage boiling over. I know about you and Cassidy, you lying snake. Derek flinched as they fluttered around him, his green eyes turned to flint. 
Watch your tone, Marla. You're still my wife. Like hell I am. I was shaking now, tears burning hot streaks down my cheeks. After everything I've done for you, everything I sacrificed, this is how you repay me? He spoke slowly, as if explaining something to a petulant child. Don't be so dramatic. People make mistakes. Mistakes, I shrieked. You cheated on me, Derek. You violated our marriage vows and disgraced our family. In an instant, Derek closed the distance between us, gripping my arm in a vice. Listen here, you ungrateful little. I didn't let him finish. My palm connected with his cheek in a resounding crack that echoed through the cavernous foyer. He released me, stumbling backwards with shock painted across his features. I glared at the loathsome man before me with fresh eyes, unfettered by illusion. The perfect husband, the kindly patriarch, the magnanimous pillar of the community, all a carefully constructed facade. Well, his mask had slipped tonight, and it wasn't going back on, not if I had anything to say about it. Derek's handprint bloomed an angry red on my arm as I sat across from Vincent at a dingy diner. My brother's jaw ticked as he examined the mark, anger simmering behind his eyes. That rat bastard put his hands on you? His voice was low, dangerous. I shook my head tightly. It doesn't matter. I got what I needed. Vincent arched an eyebrow as I slid a crumpled envelope across the tabletop. He peered inside, brow furrowing at the stack of documents. This is... Evidence of Derek's money laundering and embezzlement from his firm, I stated flatly. He's been skimming funds and filtering them through a bogus offshore account. Vincent's eyes widened as he scanned the damning paperwork. How the hell did you get this stuff, Marla? My lips twitched in a humorless smile. Turns out the snake had a lockbox stashed in the basement. All his dirty secrets laid bare. Jesus. Vincent released a long breath, dragging a hand down his face. What the hell are you going to do now? Take him down. My voice was iron. The affair was just the start. But this. I tapped the envelope. This is everything. He studied me carefully for a long moment before giving a slow nod of understanding. You're really going to destroy the bastard, huh? He brought this on himself, I said through gritted teeth. I'm just returning the favor. Vincent leaned back, an approving glint in his eye. Damn, I don't know whether to be impressed or terrified of you right now. Little of both, most likely. We shared a grim smile. Derek might have money, status, and power, but did he truly understand who he was dealing with? My dear husband was about to learn the hard way. The next morning, I strode into Derek's home office with the envelope tucked under my arm. He glanced up briefly from his laptop before returning his focus to the screen with an dismissive snort. Here to make another scene, Marla. I set the envelope on his desk with a thump, watching as his eyes flickered to the damning stack of incriminating intel. A bead of sweat formed on his brow. What is this? Proof of your money laundering, Derek. I kept my tone icy, devoid of emotion. The embezzlement, the secret accounts, it's all right there in black and white. His veneer of smug indifference cracked at last as his face drained of color. That's, that's impossible. How did you— don't insult me by playing dumb. I crossed my arms as his gaze met mine, full of panic and desperation. You thought you could lie, cheat, and steal behind my back forever. Well, your reckoning is here. Derek surged to his feet, fists clenched at his sides. You stupid bitch, you have no idea what you've done. No, Derek. I cut him off smoothly. For once, I know exactly what I've done. He opened his mouth to unleash another torrent of vitriol, but I didn't let him get the chance. Holding up a single finger, I shook my head slowly. Game over. You're going to listen very carefully now. The dim lighting of the underground parking garage cast harsh shadows across Angela's striking features as she emerged from her sleek black sedan. Though impeccably dressed, her eyes betrayed a haunted look. Marla, she greeted with a curt nod. Thank you for meeting me. I returned the gesture, keeping my expression neutral. Of course— though I must admit I'm surprised you reached out after all this time. Yes, well? Angela's polished veneer slipped for just a moment as she pursed her lips tightly. Circumstances have changed. I can only assume this has something to do with my husband? I arched an eyebrow. A muscle twitched in Angela's jaw. Let's just say Derek and I have had a severe clash of interests. He's made an enemy of the wrong person. Angela's bitterness hung heavy in the air between us. My curiosity peaked. 
just what did that weasel Derek do to earn such obvious contempt? I've been watching your situation closely, Marla, Angela continued, regaining her cool composure. And I couldn't help noticing we have a mutual vested interest in seeing Derek removed from the equation. Realization blossomed in my chest. You want to take him down, too? Her lips curved in a predatory smile. Indeed, I do. And from what I've gathered, you've already laid quite a bit of groundwork. My chin lifted a fraction. I have resources. As do I. Angela retrieved a glossy dossier from her car, flipping it open to reveal a treasure trove of intel. Everything from financials to personal indiscretions to, shall we say, extracurriculars. My eyebrows shot up as I scanned the lurid photographs and incriminating documents detailing Derek's misdeeds. His affair with Cassidy was just the tip of the proverbial iceberg. So, I said slowly, what are you proposing exactly? A mutually beneficial partnership. Angela snapped the dossier shut with finality. We pool our resources, cover every angle, and coordinate to strike at the perfect moment. I'll handle dismantling his professional clout while you dismantle him personally. I held her piercing stare, giving a measured nod. I'm listening. The ghost of a smile played across Angela's blood-red lips. Splendid. Then let's begin plotting our endgame, shall we? Vincent's eyes were wild as I relayed the details of my clandestine meeting. You're sure you can trust this woman? She seems pretty damn shady, if you ask me. Angela despises Derek just as much as we do, I countered calmly. Maybe more. From what she showed me, he's ruined her in ways we can't even imagine. My brother scrubbed a hand down his stubbled jaw, working his way through the implications. I just worry this is only going to bite you in the ass down the road, Marla, handing a loaded gun to some rando bent on vengeance? I know the risks. I set my jaw, undeterred. But this is the best chance to take Derek down entirely, both personally and professionally. He'll have nowhere left to run, nowhere left to hide. Vince shook his head slowly. Just be careful, sis. I got a bad feeling about all this. I rose from the couch, squaring my shoulders as a renewed sense of determination washed over me. Don't worry. Angela may be seeking her own interests, but I know exactly whose side I'm on. As I strode out of the living room, my brother's concerned gaze burned into the back of my skull. But his worry was unfounded. For the first time in ages I felt truly in control, not just of my own fate, but of Derek's ruination as well. Painful as it would be, his downfall was inevitable now. The grand ballroom buzzed with hushed conversation and clinking champagne flutes as New York's financial elite rubbed shoulders. Derek, resplendent in his tailored tuxedo, worked the crowd like a consummate politician, all forced smiles and hollow platitudes. I tracked his movements from across the cavernous space, my throat tightening with revulsion. Soon that smarmy facade would slip, revealing the true monster lurking underneath. Angela materialized at my side, two flutes of bubbly in hand. Are you ready for this? Her tone was all business. Taking the offered glass, I nodded once. More than ready. A hush fell over the crowd as the evening's keynote speaker took the stage, Derek's boss at the investment firm. I clenched my fist as he launched into his boring diatribe about ethical practices and fiscal responsibility. Angela leaned close, murmuring under her breath, on my signal. My heart kicked into overdrive. Despite all the meticulous planning and preparation, was I really ready to watch it all burn? Derek caught my eye from across the crowded room, his brow furrowing ever so slightly at my expression. Too late to back out now. Angela's hand found the small of my back, guiding me toward the service entrance. Within moments, the ayaminated screens flanking the stage flickered to life with a kaleidoscope of incriminating visuals. Spreadsheets detailing embezzled funds, video footage of Derek's illicit affairs, the whole sordid saga laid bare. A stunned silence fell over the ballroom as hundreds of eyes turned toward the graphic displays. Then a solitary cry of outrage pierced the quiet as Derek leapt to his feet. "'What is the meaning of this?' he bellowed, crimson splotches marrying his cheeks. Taking a fortifying breath, I strode up the side steps onto the stage as all eyes swiveled toward me. Derek faltered as our gazes met, naked shock and dawning horror etched across his features. Marla. He mouthed my name in disbelief. I stepped up to the podium, snatching the microphone with a renewed sense of purpose. Let the implosion begin. Good evening, I said, my voice ringing out with more confidence than I felt. 
I'm Marla Wallace, Derek's soon-to-be ex-wife. A wave of murmurs cascaded through the crowd. I pressed on, undeterred. For years, my husband has lied, cheated, and embezzled from this company, siphoning off funds to fuel his decadent lifestyle and sordid affairs, but no more. I leveled my gaze directly at Derek, whose face had drained of all color. Consider this an overdue reckoning for your sins, Derek. He opened his mouth, but I cut him off with a sharp slash of my hand as the incriminating images cycled once more. These documents, videos, and records serve as damning proof of your crimes and indiscretions. Your house of lies is about to come crumbling down, revealing the reprehensible man lurking beneath. I paused, holding his haunted stare for a beat. Any lies to tell the crowd, dear husband? Any more deceits to foist upon these good people? A muscle jumped in Derek's jaw, but he remained resolutely silent, rooted to the spot under the scrutinizing glare of his peers and colleagues. I allowed myself a grim smile as I took in his impotent fury, so deliciously cowed by the truth at last. I didn't think so. With those three words still hanging in the air, I turned on my heel and exited stage left, leaving Derek alone to face the inquisitive mob. The curtain finally lowered on his pathetic parade. The sharp crack of Derek's parrick's palm connecting with my cheek reverberated through the cavernous foyer. I staggered back, more stunned than hurt by the vicious backhand. "'You stupid bitch!' he raged, spittle flying from his contorted lips. "'Do you have any idea what you've done?' Lifting my chin, I met his blazing glare with icy calm. "'Taken back my life, Derek, something you should have seen coming a long time ago.' His nostrils flared as he advanced on me again fists clenched at his sides. I'll destroy you for this, Marla. You won't be able to show your face in this city ever again. Refusing to flinch, I held my ground as he loomed over me. Funny, I was about to say the same thing to you. Derek's face purpled with apoplectic rage as he gripped my shoulders, giving me a vicious shake. You'll regret crossing me, you vindictive little. Get your hands off her! Vincent's roar preceded the thunderous impact of his body slamming into Derek's side. They went down in a blur of flailing limbs and profanities. My brother landed on top, raining down a hail of wild haymakers that snapped Derek's head back with sickening cracks. "'Don't you ever lay a hand on my sister again, you bastard! Vince!' I grabbed his wrist as he reared back for another blow. "'That's enough!' he froze, chest heaving, and glared at the crumpled— bloody mess beneath him with undisguised loathing. Slowly he allowed me to pull him to his feet. Derek groaned, clutching at his brutalized face. I'll have you arrested. For what? I crossed my arms as my brother stepped protectively in front of me. For defending myself after your unwarranted attack? Wheezing through a broken nose, Derek's gaze swiveled between us in impotent rage. You two, you freaks have no idea what hell you've unleashed. Vincent snorted derisively. Yeah, feel real threatened by a couple of broke losers. He turned his back on Derek in clear dismissal. I allowed myself a parting look of smug satisfaction at my soon-to-be ex-husband, a pathetic shell of the arrogant titan he once fancied himself. Face it, Derek, I said evenly. Your reign of terror is over. The months following Derek's spectacular downfall passed in a whirlwind of lawyers, depositions, and bitter court battles. True to his petulant word, he launched every conceivable legal assault in a futile effort to punish me. I weathered each salvo stoically, buoyed by Vincent's steadfast support and the advice of my own formidable attorney, courtesy of Angela's resources. In the end, Derek's boundless wrath amounted to nothing more than a noisy temper tantrum. I emerged victorious with a considerable settlement, including assets and properties directly tied to his embezzlement scheme. He, on the other hand, faced the prospect of federal prison time, along with the permanent dismantling of his career and reputation. The great Derek Wallace, reduced to a mere cautionary tale. On the last day of legal proceedings, I strode from the courthouse with my head held high, squinting against the brilliant spring sunlight. Vincent pulled me into a fierce hug on the grandiose front steps. You did it, sis. That smug prick got exactly what he deserved. I disentangled myself from his embrace with a small smile. Not quite everything, but it's a good start. My brother's brow furrowed in confusion until realization bloomed. Ah, still have some unfinished business with the little mistress, eh? My answering look was grim. Unfortunately, yes. Cassidy hasn't faced her reckoning quite yet. 
Vincent draped a supportive arm across my shoulders as we began descending the courthouse steps together. Don't worry, Marla, that little tramp's time is coming, too. I allowed myself a fierce grin as I gazed out over the city skyline, tasting the first sweet sip of my hard-won freedom. You're damn right it is. The sleek chrome and glass lobby of Wallace Corp glistened with overwrought opulence. I strode through the garish space, purpose burning in my chest, barely registering the awestruck stares from the stuffy suits milling about. They could gawk all they wanted. I was a woman reborn, empowered, emboldened, and utterly unstoppable. Angela fell into step beside me, her stiletto heels clicking in sync with my purposeful stride. Ready? I shot her a look of grim determination like you wouldn't believe. She allowed a feral smile as we approached the pivoting glass doors, like a lioness scenting her prey. Then let's finish what we started, shall we? The plush executive suite loomed at the end of the sprawling corridor, gaudy and ostentatious. My lip curled involuntarily. Of course, Derek's office would be an exercise in such grotesque excess. Cassidy's saccharine lilt drifted through the closed door ahead. Oh, Mr. Wallace, you're being utterly ridiculous. Angela didn't break stride, kicking in the double doors with a deafening bang. They crashed open to reveal Cassidy perched on the edge of Derek's desk in a rumpled blouse and hiked-up skirt. The blonde bimbo startled like a scalded cat, her face contorting in shock and horror as she scrambled to cover herself. What the hell is going on? Derek, ever the pathetic shell of himself, simply gawked at us in stunned silence. You two are just shameless, aren't you? I sneered, unable to hide my utter revulsion. Angela waved a negligent hand toward the disgraced former CEO. Derek here has already received the punitive end of our little enterprise, but as for you, Miss Miller? Cassidy pulled her skirt back into place with trembling hands, color draining from her face. M me What are you talking about? Stalking forward, I snatched a framed photo from Derek's desk, a candid shot of the two of us from happier times. I hurled it toward the cringing mistress, shards of glass detonating around her. You conniving little whore! Not satisfied with just being Derek's side piece, were you? I advanced another step, fists clenched at my sides. Did ruining my life sweeten the betrayal for you? Cassidy shrank back against Derek's desk, whimpering like a scalded dog. I didn't mean. Oh, you meant it, all right? Every lingering touch, every wanton look, don't even try to deny it. I glared at Derek his eyes downcast in humiliation. Whirling back on Cassidy, I leaned in until we were nearly nose to nose. But I'm cured of your deceptions, sweetheart. See, my dear husband already paid the piper. Now it's your turn. Her pretty face contorted in anguished realization as Angela tossed a hefty dossier onto the desk beside her. Everything from willful complicity and corporate malfeasance to public indecency and misuse of company assets, you're going down just as hard as Derek here, I'm afraid. Cassidy's hands flew to her face as pitiful sobs racked her slender frame. No, please, you can't. I straightened, unmoved by her pathetic blubbering. Can't what? Enact some long overdue justice? I shook my head slowly. Sorry, Cass. The free ride's over. Derek finally roused himself, surging to his feet with a bark of bitter laughter. You stupid bitch! Even destroying me isn't enough? Angela rounded on him, eyes flashing with divine fury. Did you truly think there'd be no consequences for your litany of sins, Derek? That this? She gestured between him and Cassidy disdainfully. Would have no reckoning? His shoulders slumped in impotent resignation. I stared at the miserable broken creature who was once my spouse, a shattered effigy of power and masculine ego. Releasing a breath, I turned on my heel to go, sidestepping the shattered picture frame and letting the shards of glass crunch beneath my heels. Enjoy your new life in ruins, Derek. You've earned every second. The morning sun poured through the wall of east-facing windows, bathing my new office in a warm, radiant glow. I breathed deeply, savoring the crisp scent of undiluted potential as I surveyed my freshly minted entrepreneurial empire. Who would have thought, Six months ago that I'd be starting over like this, truly free from the shackles of my tarnished former life. Not that the path here had been easy, by any means. After the brutal legal battles and personal reckonings, the divorce proceedings were almost anticlimactic. Derek balked at every turn, leveraging what pathetic sway and influence he had left to make things as difficult as possible. 
vindictive to the very last, the bastard fought me tooth and nail at the slightest provocation, until Angela and her elite legal team finally wrestled him to the table. Begrudgingly, he acceded to a settlement that secured me a considerable portion of the spoils from his criminal escapades. It felt karmic in a way that his own greed and misdeeds paved the way for my fresh start. One last bitter pill for the disgraced mogul to swallow. But tallying the settlement's windfall was a secondary concern for me. More than anything else, I craved a definitive rewriting of my own identity, one penned firmly in my own hand, free of Derek's manipulation or toxic imprint. Which brought me here, to this gleaming new professional endeavor. And this time, I held all the control. A gentle rap on the frosted glass door pulled my attention. Come in, I called, already knowing who it would be. Vincent stuck his head through the opening, surveying my new domain with an appreciative grin. Well, I'll be damned, sis. This place is even swankier than I pictured. Don't sound so surprised, I teased, rounding the ultra-modern desk to greet him with a warm hug. After everything we endured, I deserve to start with a bang, no? My brother's smile stretched even wider as he pulled back, giving my forearm an affectionate squeeze. You've more than earned it, that's for damn sure. His gaze wandered across the sleek furnishings and industrial chic accents. Just don't go getting too big for your britches, Marla. Wouldn't want success spoiling that newly liberated spirit of yours. I rolled my eyes good-naturedly. Please, after surviving the hell Derek put me through, there's no danger of that. Crossing my arms, I followed Vincent's contented stare across the sprawling office space. This is just the start of something bigger, Vince. No more standing on the sidelines, letting life pass me by. I lifted my chin with a renewed surge of determination. It's time to leave the past behind and march boldly into the future. My brother watched me with unmistakable pride shining in his eyes. Damn right it is, he said simply. I held his gaze for a long beat, savoring the steadfast support I saw reflected there. Lord knows I couldn't have persevered without him by my side through it all. But that visceral struggle, that all-consuming hellstorm, was over now. Vanquished. I'd risen from the ashes of my own ruination to reclaim the life that was always meant to be mine. Draping an arm across Vincent's broad shoulders, I turned to face the wall of plate-glass windows, drawing in the breathtaking view of the city skyline that seemed to glitter with infinite promise and possibility. A brilliant new horizon stretched out before me now, resplendent and untapped with potential, and I had every intention of seizing it in my own two hands. 